ISRO confirming this is the first update, by the way, that ISRO has put out on Chandrayaan 3 today, in which they've said we're all set to initiate the automatic landing sequence. What does that mean? Essentially, to break it down to you in layman terms, uh, the command has already been sent across, and that's something we told you at 9.45 this morning. The command has already been sent across from the center behind me, from Team Chandrayaan, to Lander Vikram. Uh, and they will be locked and loaded in about one hour from now, once they check if all conditions are 100% favorable for a smooth, soft landing. Remember, we've told you about the 15 minutes of terror. That 15 minutes of terror is going to be completely automated, which is what ALS really stands for, an automatic landing sequence. It comes down to the design, the tech that was used while designing Chandrayaan 3. If all of that was successful, especially having learned lessons from Chandrayaan 2, it means we're set for a successful landing onto the South Pole of the Moon. Also important to highlight here that the automatic landing sequence is something that consists essentially, and you see in that statement from ISRO, they refer to thrustable engines. There are four such thrustable engines on Lander Vikram that will help it come down from 6,000 kilometers per hour to a standstill, to zero. You can only imagine the kind of tech, the kind of genius it takes to ensure something like that is accomplished in a matter of 15 minutes. So these thrusters will be used on and off, again, completely automated. It will start off with four. There are four phases as part of, in fact, the final 15 minutes. And the last stage, which is the vertical descent, that's when the thrusters then will go in in and out, essentially two of them, these thrustable engines will then be functioning to ensure that from 6,000 kilometers it doesn't bang onto the surface of the moon, but rather controlled comes down. Because also keep in mind, there is the factor of the moon's atmosphere and that pressure working against Vikram. It's extremely technical, but I hope I was able to explain that to you as much as I could uh, to break down exactly what we mean by automatic landing sequence and how that's going to work for 15 minutes there from 545. But ISRO also, with that particular update they've put out, has confirmed that everything is on track, everything's happening as per schedule. It will start at 520 this evening. That's that's when the live streaming will begin, and that's when you'll be able to catch all of the action firsthand. I should just show you those pictures also. Our scientists hard at work. I can tell you that from early in the morning, they've been streaming in. I have no doubt that many of them were staying up through the night within the premises as well. They've all been hard at work cool, collected, sticking to the duties they have at hand, sticking to whatever procedure needs to be followed right now. The first update that's coming from ISRO is one of positivity, is one saying, look, all is well. We're going to go ahead with this mission. Shivarur is still with me, getting us all the details, the communication that's coming from ISRO. It's looking good, Shiv. It looks like we're well on our way to ensuring that soft landing. I know there was a lot of talk of plan B, of what will happen if things change. There is still a bit of space for that, because as per the information we had, maybe in one hour from now, they'll have concrete information on the conditions of the South Pole of the Moon and whether it's feasible to go ahead with that landing. That's right, uh, Akshita, and I, uh, can I say right off the bat that, you know, you standing just meters away uh, from the people you see in these beautiful pictures uh, is filling me, me with a great deal of envy because you're right there while this is all playing out. Uh, I can only imagine the atmosphere inside the ISRO control room. Now, these pictures you're seeing here on India Today that have just been released by ISRO are the first images from inside the actual battle room where it all happens. The men and women of ISRO, men Many of whom Akshita has already, uh, you know, met off camera. She's had meetings with them. She's spoken to them to get a real flavor of how things work. Akshita, you're absolutely right. There are many variables. Uh, you know, there's, there's weather. There are uh, there are other there are other uh, situations that the. Uh, you know, the, 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 the observers and the managers of the Vikram uh, will need to look out for before that actual landing. But this latest update that ISRO has put out, uh, you know, once again, uh, uh, you know, paints a very, very calm and confident picture. Everything is going like clockwork as planned uh, by ISRO. They've got this on track. They've got this one. Uh, 520 is when, uh, you know, the final sequence initiates. 544 is when the final landing sequence happens. And then six 6.04 p.m. 
or thereabouts is when that successful landing will take place. We're all in an enormous amount of anticipation. I can imagine that things must be pretty noisy inside the war room of ISRO at this point of time. Uh, you know, lots of people talking to each other, commands being shouted. Uh, you know, there are microphones at each of these stations. People have their headphones on. But uh, I do know, because we've seen this before, Akshita, for those final minutes, at about 5.20 onwards, a silence will descend. A silence will descend in this amazing room of ISRO, uh, and everybody will be looking at their screens, looking at their telemetry data, waiting for that signal from Vikram. So, uh, you know, I'd really give anything to be inside that room for those final minutes. I hope you get a chance to get in there. I'm going to be in in just about an hour from now. I've got my passes. I've done the due security clearance. So yes, Shiv, I'll be one of the lucky few, fortunate enough to be inside when the landing actually takes place. So I'll get to witness some of the action firsthand, and I promise to get you and all of our viewers a sense of exactly what it's going to look like. Dr. Jitendra Singh, Space Minister, has also just tweeted. He's been very, very closely following everything that's happened. So once that update has been put out by ISRO, he's also confirmed exactly that. He said all set to initiate the automatic landing sequence. The lander module activates the throttable engines for power descent. He shared the pictures also. So essentially sharing ISRO's update there. You've got the government also very closely, I'm sure, like every single one of us, tracking what's happening right now. Shiv, I remember you were there when Chandrayaan 2 was landing here in Bengaluru, exactly where I am in Pina. Can you tell me and, you know, tell our viewers a sense of what was the mood when you entered uh, it was absolute, uh, you know, at that point of time, the anticipation was so high, the exhilaration was so high, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the landing was to happen very late in the night, early in the morning, around 2 a.m., if I'm not mistaken. So it was an all-nighter that was being pulled at that point of time. Uh, uh, of course, there was a great deal of disappointment over what finally happened. But... Speaking to, uh, you know, Mr. Sivan, who was the ISRO chief at that point of time, and all the scientists involved, while there was a great deal of disappointment, each one of them was completely galvanized, Akshita, because as you've been hearing from all of these scientists you've been speaking to, that is the nature of space exploration. When you reach into the unknown, there is always the possibility of things not going quite as planned. It's also very important to note that the... The Chandrayaan-2 mission was not a failure in that sense. The last bit did not quite work out, but the mission itself was largely a success. There were great uh, many learnings uh, which have been incorporated, as you've been reporting, in Chandrayaan-3, including in the mechanisms for the landing, uh, uh, you know, all the, all the criteria that are taken into account before effecting the final uh, landing sequence. So Chandrayaan-2, in many ways, is the, is the heart and soul of Chandrayaan-3. It is because of Chandrayaan-3 that Chandrayaan 3 uh, exists and because of Chandrayaan 3 that Gaganyaan and future missions will also exist. So none of these missions exist in isolation. They all flow into each other. The lessons, the learnings, they all flow into each other and influence each other. Many of the scientists from Chandrayaan 2 are the same that are on Chandrayaan 3. They are older, they are wiser, uh, they are looking out for more things, uh, they have more information, they definitely have better technology and as, uh, you know, as, as we've been reporting through the, you know, through the year, ISRO has made an example of being able to do this kind of thing at a fraction of the cost that many other countries have. And that's why they are the Sinosure of all eyes across the world. ISRO has made a name for itself of being able to maintain a world-class space program without burning an enormous hole in a country's national budget. No other country has been able to do it, not even China. And that's the reason why Chandrayaan-3 is being looked at from literally everywhere right now, Akshita. 600 crores ship, lesser than the budget of a film that was based on space, lesser than the budget of the film Interstellar, and that by itself is so, so amazing. I was reminded of uh, a, the conversation that I had with Chris Hadfield when you were talking about how Chandrayaan 3 wouldn't exist if not for Chandrayaan 2. He referred to it as the granddaughter of Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2. And that's so fitting because even today, right now, as you pointed out, Shiv, Chandrayaan-2 has helped immensely in what's happening. You've got the orbiter still going around the moon and it's worked 
effectively in being a communicator between Lando Vikram and the scientists who are seated behind me in their mission complex. It's helped in communicating besides, of course, uh, the propulsion module also that continues to go around the moon. So that speaks volumes of how every single mission has been such a big driver towards the next mission also for ISRO. And like Shiv said from Chandrayaan 3, of course, that the stage will be set for a Mangalyan, for a Gaganyan, because a soft landing is so crucial for a manned mission as well.